Hi, everyone. I'm Todd Davidson, the CEO of Travel Oregon. Though I wish we were able to meet in person, thank you for joining us for this virtual edition of the 36th Annual Oregon Governor's Conference on Tourism. And what better way for us to kick off this year's Governor's Conference than recognizing the hard work, dedication, and resilience demonstrated throughout our industry and across our state over the last year. So my friends, welcome to the annual Tourism Industry Achievement Awards. Each year, these awards pay tribute to the determined efforts of those who use their skills, resourcefulness, creativity, and innovative spirit to help create a better life for all Oregonians. Award categories tonight include a rising star from each of the seven tourism regions for outstanding work in the field of diversity, equity, and inclusion, outstanding leadership, and strong partnerships. As we begin, I'll take a moment and recognize each and every one of you. Although unprecedented has completely lost its impact in describing 2020, it doesn't make it any less true. 2020 was a year unlike anything our industry has ever experienced. We faced economic downturns before, but nothing that has had such a tremendous impact on every aspect of our work. I am deeply grateful to work alongside you our tourism industry partners as we rebuild tourism in Oregon. To kick off our ceremony, we're going to start with the Governor's Award. This highly valued honor represents the culmination of Oregon's travel and tourism industry's deep appreciation for longtime commitment, accomplishment, and service by an individual or individuals who have enhanced the Oregon visitor experience and elevated the travel and tourism industry. With that, it is my honor to welcome Governor Kate Brown to share her remarks and present the recipient of the esteemed Governor's Award. Hello there, I'm Governor Kate Brown. Thank you for inviting me to join all of you this evening for the 36th Oregon Governor's Conference on Tourism. This past year has been unlike any other, testing us in ways we could have never imagined or predicted. Uncertainty hung over our heads like a cloud, and often it felt like there was no end in sight. Everyone here knows the devastation this virus has brought to our businesses and our communities. I know each of you has your story of the past year, where too often the days were filled with moments of struggle and loss, but we cannot forget the moments of joy. This past year is a story of resilience, and strength as much as it is of hardship. I've seen many businesses quickly adapt to the pandemic, finding new ways to work together and continue operating under public health measures, getting creative to reconnect with customers and finding new ones as many businesses went online. Still, I know that public health actions the pandemic forced upon us had a devastating impact on Oregon's tourism industry. We stayed home to save lives, but that also meant we didn't see the millions of visitors who come here every year to enjoy our world-class food scene and entertainment venues, breathtaking parks and natural spaces, our wineries and vineyards, our breweries, and all the amazing things Oregon has to offer, certainly impacting you, your families, and our communities. So before we go into the awards ceremony and a day of workshops that focus on the future of tourism in a post-COVID era, I want to say that I know none of this has been easy. And I want to thank you. Thanks to each and every one of you. Thank you for doing your part to protect the public health and safety of our communities. Thank you for not giving up when it was hard and it seemed like there was no light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you for being here today to reconnect and rebuild such a critical part of our economy, an economy grounded in our natural beauty, the outdoors, scenic surroundings, and as Travel Oregon so nicely coined, the wonders of Oregon. There are certainly better days ahead. As more Oregonians are getting vaccinated, we are close to fully reopening our economy. I'm committed to using my 10 point plan for economic recovery so we can build back a more just and equitable Oregon. 
And with federal dollars from the American Rescue Plan, Oregon will have the resources to invest in transformational projects and initiatives. Now, I'm excited to learn about discussions and ideas from this conference and how we can use the lessons of the pandemic to build a stronger future for Oregon. It's my great honor to present the first award of the night, the Governor's Award. This year's award is not just about one accomplishment or achievement. It's not even about one individual or organization. It honors contributions to the tourism sector that embody the Oregon spirit, the spirit of hope, optimism, resilience, and community. After a year we will never forget, I cannot imagine a more deserving group of people to be recognized for their dedication and selfless service to our community's economies while so much was shut down. These individuals put themselves on the front lines to provide essential services to Oregonians, keeping economic activity alive as we work to slow the spread of COVID-19. While too often the contributions these individuals make to our communities and our economy goes overlooked, they truly are the backbone of Oregon's tourism economy. Oregon's economy could not and would not survive without our hospitality workers. They answered a different call to help during last year. While most Oregonians were asked to stay home, they were asked to go to work, and they did. We all owe our gratitude and appreciation to the frontline hospitality workers who embody this Oregon spirit. They inspired hope and optimism. They showed us resilience, and they are the people that keep our community strong and connected. Please join me in honoring our frontline hospitality workers across Oregon, not only with this year's Governor's Award, but every single day. Thank you. If it weren't for the frontline workers in, in our beautiful state, we would not be as strong as we are right now. We couldn't be where we are today without our frontline workers. No, we wouldn't have been able to do it without our frontline workers, whether it was last year um, or to this day. Frontline workers got us through this pandemic. I, I think it's as simple as that. They're what make the people that we celebrate at this conference worth celebrating. Reflecting back on the last year, it's been just insanely challenging. I'm very proud of our frontline workers and what they've brought to the table and how they've shown up every single day through all of it and had a smile on their face even though you can't see it under those masks. They've dealt with those challenges head on, you know, of what we're all dealing with and it's been very impressive. This pandemic absolutely put our crew front and center and really, I believe, brought a new appreciation for the people that have been out there every day protecting your health and your safety, and also the uh, quality of the product that we provide for our guests, for our coworkers, and ultimately for our community. I am just amazed every day at the graciousness that all of our hospitality workers put out there. It's hard to really put into words how important these people coming to work every day for the customer, it, it, you can't overstate that impact and that accomplishment. Well, there was that Valentine's Day weekend when a snowstorm came into town and people lost power all throughout the city. And many people came downtown to stay in the hotels that were empty down here. And all of a sudden we were just inundated with people that were dining in suddenly. I'm really proud of the team that was here. As short staffed as we were, that came together, rallied, and, and took care of the people in our community. You couldn't help but just feel this overwhelming sense of pride walking through the airport throughout this entire time and seeing people in a really difficult situation being at their best. We love our frontline workers. They mean everything to us, and you're totally gonna get a tear out of me now. <laughs> um, they have been there with us through this all, and I can't say it enough how appreciative I am of everybody for showing up for us. Well, I think the pandemic really, you know, shined a light on those who are essential and really important parts of our industry and our economy. And so I think it's just wonderful that they're being recognized in this way because there was just so much to overcome last year. I'm overwhelmed with happiness that the governor 
is recognizing these frontline workers who really were the people in the trenches. I think the governor made a great decision in awarding our frontline workers the governor's award for 2020. Uh, we would not have gotten through this pandemic without them. To echo Governor Brown, thank you to Oregon's frontline hospitality workers. You are truly the face of tourism in our state and what helps make a visitor's experience so memorable. We wouldn't be where we are without you. And in your honor, we're making a charitable contribution to an Oregon nonprofit that provides financial relief grants to Oregon's food service and agricultural workers that are experiencing a crisis brought on by medical debt. Thank you again and congratulations to Oregon's frontline hospitality workers. Our next award recognizes our industry's rising stars. Individuals who may be relatively new to tourism, perhaps within the last five years, and have shown leadership, commitment, and a passion for Oregon's tourism industry. But with so many amazing nominees doing incredible work across the state, we couldn't choose just one. So we've decided to honor one rising star in each of our seven tourism regions. With that, I'm proud to introduce Kevin Wright, Travel Oregon's Vice President of Global Marketing. Thank you, Todd. There's arguably no region that has seen more devastating impacts from the pandemic than the Portland region. So many businesses, hotels, and restaurants that help make up the vibrant downtown core of Portland have been closed due to COVID, many of which will not reopen. In response to this, the Portland region's rising star started Bricks Need Mortar to support independent businesses and retailers. Bricks Need Mortar advocates for small businesses with campaigns designed to direct customers to support small, independent businesses. They also share vital information on the needs of our community with policymakers to help inform decisions that positively impact small, independent brick and mortar businesses. She has been an active voice on community and government calls discussing ways to support local businesses. It is my privilege to honor Sarah Shaul as the Portland region's rising star. I want to thank Travel Oregon. I certainly didn't set out to be recognized for this work. I'm, I'm here because I put out a blog post asking people to purchase gift certificates from small businesses. In one week, the blog post became the PDX SOS website, now a directory of over 800 small businesses. And I did this as a volunteer because it was the right thing to do. This led to the founding of Bricks Need Mortar to support the very small businesses that inspire people to travel to Portland, to Oregon, and to the Pacific Northwest for the delicious food, the unique shops, and the innovative creations. So here we are, a year later, our masks are coming off, people are traveling again, PDX SOS is transforming away from a distress signal to recovery as small shops big hearts, and I'm excited to share that we continue to work to move the needle with significant solutions for our small businesses, like the Small Shops Big Hearts gift card, available at over 200 small businesses in Portland, and make possible through our collaboration with Kudo Payments. This alternative to corporate gift cards will move the needle for our small businesses as they recover, thrive, and continue to inspire. I wanna thank all of those who see the passion, drive, and contributions that our small businesses make in our communities and for all of you who put your money where your heart is. Thank you. Congratulations, Sarah. Hello, everyone. I'm Petra Hackworth, the Vice President of Global Sales at Travel Oregon. When the City of Grants Pass faced an impending resignation of its contract designation marketing organization on July 1, 2020, City Administration turned to the Information Coordinator, Stephen Sable, to take the reins off the Tourism Promotions Division as an interim operator until a new DMO could be established. Stephen accepted the challenge and over the past 10 months, through a global pandemic, has helped overhaul the Travel Grants Pass website, established a consistent brand, instituted social media campaigns, and devised a promotional campaign to support the City's Welcome Center. His efforts have led to unprecedented web exposure and traffic and increased visitation all while prioritizing messaging about safe travel and social distancing. Stephen, we are honored to recognize you as Southern Oregon's rising star. First, I'd like to thank the governor and Travel Oregon for this tremendous honor. It is truly humbling to receive this recognition. Second, I'd like to thank city manager of Grants Pass, Karen Aaron Kubik, and my immediate supervisor, city recorder, 
Karen Furk, for trusting me with leading the city's tourism division during these unprecedented times. I'd like to thank my colleagues at the City of Grants Pass, most specifically our IT department, our GIS division, and our Public Works department who have supported my efforts throughout the year. Next, I'd like to thank the staff of our vibrant Welcome Center in our downtown who welcome all of our visitors with a friendly smile and a happy face every single day. They are truly the front line of Travel Grants Pass. I'd like to thank my partners in content creators and contributors who have helped with their passion for our community to promote our community throughout the year. I'd like to thank the Grants Pass business owners and operators and their employees who did their best throughout the year to stay open as much as possible, whenever possible, throughout changing restrictions and conditions all year long. They truly have made Grants Pass what Expedia calls one of the 20 friendliest cities in America. I'd like to thank, next and most importantly, my wife and partner, Annie, who stands by me through all I do and supports me in everything and who I could not be half of who I am without. And finally, I'd like to say it has been my great pleasure to be the representative of Travel Grants Pass, the Grants Pass community as the true hub of Southern Oregon. Thank you so much and live rogue. Well deserved, Stephen. Good afternoon, I'm Scott Bricker, Travel Oregon's Interim Vice President of Destination Development. I never want to be in a debate against our next rising star, but love kicking back to listening to her big tourism podcasts. Let's just say it's impossible not to be influenced by her passion for Oregon and her commitment to protecting and preserving its destinations and attractions. Working with Erica Sears means you are guaranteed to learn something new and have a good time while doing it. She is visionary and deeply knowledgeable. She is passionate about Oregon and the Oregon coast and strives to maintain a delicate balance between promotion and maintaining the distinct characteristics of what makes it special. Under her innovative leadership as deputy director, the Oregon Coast Visitors, Visitors Association has joined Tourism Declares a Climate Emergency, an initiative that commits to purposeful actions to significantly reducing carbon emissions by 2030. Erica Sears, you are truly the Oregon Coast's rising star. Thank you, Scott, for your kind remarks, for Travel Oregon, for this recognition, and of course, the Oregon Coast Visitors Association team and board for making it all possible. This past year has brought a beautiful combination of resiliency and hospitality to the Oregon coast. We've had restaurants that have provided meals to employees and locals and continue to do so even when they were shut down themselves. We had lodging operators that provided temporary housing to fire evacuees during emergencies. We have our hardworking farming and fishing communities that work every day, all day, to provide this high quality local food products. And of course, our dedicated land stewards who continue to protect and support our natural wildlife and natural landscapes that make the Oregon coast the Oregon coast. Every day I get to wake up and work with these courageous, strong, wonderful, and salty people on the most incredible destination on planet Earth, the Oregon coast. And for that, I thank you. Thank you, Erica, and congratulations. My name is Kathleen Stewart. I'm Travel Oregon's comptroller. Our next rising star took the helm of the Eastern Oregon Visitors Association in May 2019 as the organization's second director in 30 years. In her time at EOVA, she has played an instrumental role in leading the region through much transition, including holding the organization together through the COVID-19 pandemic. She has excelled at every challenge thrown at her, and despite the steep learning curve of being new to an industry in turmoil, she has proven to be an amazing leader for EOVA and incredible advocate for the tourism industry. It is my privilege to recognize Elena Corollo as Eastern Oregon's rising star. I am honored to stand today before you as a representative of the communities, people, and landscapes of Eastern Oregon that I was drawn to and captivated by when I first moved here almost a decade ago. 
I recently heard someone say that when you're not sure what to say, say thank you. So today, I thank you to the Travel Oregon staff who guide me through the tourism landscape and the industry acronyms. Uh, your positivity for all things Oregon is inspiring. Thank you to my fellow RDMOs for welcoming me with open arms. The collaborative learning and growing environment you create is unmatched. I am excited to work alongside you. To my board of directors, the tremendous support, guidance, and unwavering commitment to the organization is something to be emulated. The enthusiasm you have for your local communities in Eastern Oregon is contagious, and working with you is a wonderful experience. And to our industry partners, the businesses who are the backbone of our local communities, your drive and dedication for creating true and authentic experiences for your guests, clients, and customers enhances the best Eastern Oregon has to offer. This award represents a true team effort. The two years I have worked as EOVA's executive director have been enhanced by such a strong support network. I am grateful for your collaboration, and I look forward to continuing to showcase all Eastern Oregon tourism has to offer. Thank you. Congratulations, Elena, so well-deserved. As a leader of Visit Central Oregon's PR and social media efforts, Katie Johnson is a champion for all the communities in the Central Oregon region. Katie is passionate and hardworking. She brings energy and a positive attitude to any project she works on and isn't afraid to step into new territory. Her colleagues note that among her many amazing qualities, one of the best things about having Katie as a coworker is her empathy and dedication to finding, always finding ways to include others. Katie, we are honored to acknowledge your leadership and passion for Oregon's tourism industry by recognizing you, recognizing you as Central Oregon's rising star. Thank you, it's an honor to be here today. Thank you to Travel Oregon for not only this honor, but your support, compassion, and friendship. Also, a massive thank you to my amazing team at Visit Central Oregon. After a year of challenges and unknown, I think we are all proud to say that we came out stronger than ever. Thank you to our amazing board of directors for being so great to work with and for sharing our passion for tourism in Central Oregon. And to the Central Oregon community and our partners, despite a challenging year, I've never been more proud to be a part of such an amazing network of friends and partners. Thank you. Congratulations, Katie. My name is Harry Dalgard, Director of Travel Oregon's Regional Cooperative Tourism Program. If you live in Eugene and you've had the pleasure of watching our next rising star transform a dilapidated building into a farm to flask distillery, using hyperlocal ingredients, grains from Camas Country Mill, honey from Glory Bee, herbs from Mountain Rose Herbs to make their gin, vodka, and brandy, Thinking Tree Spirits is innovative and, is innovative and committed to supporting local farms and producers. At the start of the pandemic, CEO Emily Jensen helped Thinking Tree become the first FDA-approved distillery to produce hand sanitizer in the United States. Many gallons of hand sanitizer were donated, but this quick thinking pivot provided income needed for her business to survive the COVID-related shutdowns faced by many Oregon businesses. Emily has spent untold hours working on both the state and federal legislation to assist craft distillers in Oregon her efforts have paid off with recent changes at the federal level. Travel Oregon is pleased to honor Emily Jensen as the Willamette Valley's rising star. Thank you so much um, uh, for acknowledging our little company. Um, as you just heard, Thinking Tree Spirits is a farm to flask distillery and we source locally grown grain and fruit to make spirits that truly taste like Oregon. And our motto and our mojo is, we endeavor to bring people together. Let's use spirits as a conduit to create the world that we want to live in. Um, and although we are women led, we truly are community powered. As you heard in February of 2020, we pivoted to make hand sanitizer to give away to our community. And we worked tirelessly with lawmakers in DC and thank you to Governor Kate Brown, Peter DeFazio and Ron Wyden to be the first distillery nationwide to cut the red tape and create 120,000 proof gallons of hand sanitizer for Oregon Health Authority and hospitals across the West. It's been a radical year for our, for our company and I feel emboldened by the spirit of our government coming together to change the world. 
And we've used this momentum to pass Craft Beverage Modernization Act, save millions of jobs across the country, and this week shift legislation in Salem to support cottage industry, strengthening our community, our economy, and Oregon agriculture and new job development. <clears throat> we have so much to be proud of here in Oregon, and I thank you for supporting our vision. Cheers, Emily, and thank you for all you've done for Oregon's tourism industry. Last, but certainly not least, I'd like to recognize a leader who has supported complex and collaborative destination development projects like Ready, Set, Gorge, the East Gorge Food Trail, Spread the Love, and, and Pledge for the Gorge, just to name a few. She's currently the network director for the Columbia Gorge Tourism Alliance, and though she's fairly new to tourism industry, more than 25 years in the private sector working in brand and communication strategies has helped her optimize the positive economic impacts of the local tourism economy, enhance communities, and preserve the majestic scenery of the Columbia River Gorge. It is my pleasure to present the Rising Star Award for the Mount Hood Columbia Gorge region to Emily Reed. Thank you. I am sincerely and deeply honored to be receiving this recognition, especially given this amazing group of people up here tonight. I have on my cell phone, on the screensaver, the words get to uh, because of the work that we do. I get to live in one of the most beautiful places in the world. I get the joy of working with the people at Travel Oregon and the people in my network, the organizations and businesses and governments and visitor organizations and I get to experience the power of networks. Uh, it's not always easy. Uh, there's no one person in charge and it can be really, really slow, <laughs> but there's nothing more powerful to solve uh, really complex issues. I get to do work that takes tourism and uses it to really strengthen our local uh, communities and towns and areas. Uh, with projects such as food trails and transit and welcomeability. Uh, and I get to work in this field at a time when people were really pulling together, uh, leaning in, not pausing, um, and just being, you know, helping the small businesses, helping our communities, and just being really extra kind to each other during the last year and a half. It's, I've had a front row seat to watch people be amazing. Um, and now, I uh, get to um, work at a time when we're in person and we get to go for coffee or ice cream or a beer and hopefully never use the word pivot again. Um, but I, uh, as anyone who's ever worked in network knows that it's never one per any one person, but I'm thrilled to get to receive this honor on behalf of our network, so thank you. Thank you, Emily, and a big congrats to all of our rising stars. Our next award is the Oregon Partnership Award. Creative partnerships can be an effective way to enhance a visitor experience and promote a region or destination. The Oregon Partnership Award honors an individual, organization, or business that leveraged traditional and non-traditional partnerships by maximizing budget and capacity while creating an increase in efficiencies and aligned outcomes. Last December, in collaboration with the creative teams at North, Prosper Portland, Downtown Portland, Travel Portland, and others, the Portland Business Alliance led the creation of a special initiative that calls on all Portlanders to help the Rose City bounce back from the unprecedented economic and pandemic setbacks of 2020. The Here for Portland campaign launched with a video featuring a diverse chorus of Portlanders representing the cross-section of creative, innovative, and distinct voices that make our city the place we are all proud to call home. From small business celebrities to pro athletes, and internationally renowned musicians and authors, the video features people who are interwoven into the fabric of Portland. The campaign was propelled by leveraging unique partnerships like the special edition Timbers and Thorns scarves that literally sold out the day they were released, that allowed Portlanders to show their hometown pride while supporting the local economy and the businesses impacted by the challenges of 2020. I'm here for Portland, and I'm honored to present the Oregon Partnerships Award to the Portland Business Alliance. I think the Portland Business Alliance maybe isn't the first group that you think of working in a tourism space, but they came together with the typical collaborative spirit of Portland and really showcased what they're able to do and how they could weave it together with what's valuable to us as the tourism entity for the city. The 
Portland Business Alliance is Greater Portland's Chamber of Commerce, and we represent the employer community of uh, 2,000 plus members. We were probably five months into the pandemic. We, at that point, had learned how to connect, and yet the heart of our city was going through one of the most disruptive times it's ever experienced, and a realization that we had to figure out how to work together and there were so many groups and so many people in this relatively big city of Portland that cared deeply and also came up with initiatives. And that's why we needed one that was the umbrella, that everybody would feel welcome. So we called it strategic knitting, right? And mm. it's threading together the pieces of our community. And I think what we've woven together has been something really neat that keeps getting built on and layered on. And out of that, we came up with the line here for Portland primarily, which was an invitation to the citizenry to be here for Portland in whatever capacity. The city we love needs a lot of love right now. We need you to shop local, buy your stuff online. Shopping locally here in Portland keeps the money here. Come in, buy a plant. Be here for Portland. The city has been made great by working together. That doesn't need to stop at all, man. There's just new ways to do it. Pandemics can't kill creativity. In a time of crisis, which this was, this was a rallying cry for the people of Portland to come together and help their struggling city. This is like, your country needs you. Once we had this campaign, I had some of our members who were hungry for something say, how can I help? And that layering on is essential to the heart of how we as Portlanders work. We were so proud of the work and the call to action that it put out to the community and the fact that people showed up. We are so excited to be welcoming visitors to our city again and see it maybe a little bit differently this time. And we all want to recover maybe better. Our work is not done. Thank you, Governor Brown and the entire team for travel at Travel Oregon. Uh, I'm Amy Lewin. I am proud to lead the communications team at the Portland Business Alliance, which is Greater Portland's Chamber of Commerce. And on behalf of the incredible collaborations that took shape this year, it is an honor to be here to accept this recognition. This is a partnership award. To the creative teams at North, Travel Portland, Prosper Portland, Bricks Need Mortar, and all the other community leaders who leaned in to help answer the question, what can we do together? Thank you. Thank you for saying yes and popping on yet another Zoom call with me over the past 10 months. For those who know me, I always try to lead with facts, not metaphor, perhaps a byproduct of being an Oregon J School grad. However, the commotion of this year in many ways redefined what we all thought we knew to be true. And with so much changing rapidly, I found myself relying on fast acting metaphors to try to explain the complicated. How do we weave this into this? The notion of threading a resilient community where all voices have a role in shaping the effort became the term we called strategic knitting. We had little time to get it right, limited funds, but somehow we wove it all together and with many partnerships renewed and reformed. I can't begin to thank the countless businesses, creatives, and celebrities who volunteered to help be here for Portland because the city we love needs a whole lot of love right now. Someone told me recently that Portland rose to the occasion last year in many ways. We are a city wanting to be better. It was a hard year for many, yet we saw hundreds stand together for something that is powerful. Everyone belongs here. Everyone's voice matters. I believe the entire state of Oregon is on the brink of redefining our roadmap forward in a new and beautiful way. We live in one of the most beautiful places on earth. May our efforts to define community elevate this place so we continue to celebrate the opportunity to partner, to work together, despite all, despite it all, because for what we know to be true is here. Thank you. The Oregon Leadership Award recognizes outstanding individuals who through their exceptional work and achievements have made a difference in the communities they serve and are a valuable contributor to Oregon's tourism economy. This year's Leadership Award is presented to someone who has provided leadership, innovation, and credibility among their colleagues through the strategic management of their organization. 
At the onset of the pandemic, after making the difficult decision to lay off staff, Nick Pearson, the general manager of the Jupiter Hotel and the Jupiter Next, rallied the remaining Jupiter team and immediately began reaching out to the healthcare providers, nonprofits, and local governments to see what needs existed for utilizing the now empty 81 room original Jupiter Hotel. Three days later, Multnomah County began utilizing Jupiter's hotels rooms for houseless people who were experiencing symptoms of COVID-19. Nick developed detailed operating procedures for housekeeping, laundry, and maintenance staff, procedures that have since been widely shared and influenced emergency operations across the states. From there, Nick's work turned to helping others, other, others private businesses and venues across the state successfully excuse me, across the state successfully execute similar shelters for this vulnerable community to rest, recuperate, and receive treatment. The Jupiter Hotel Multnomah County Partnership has now been extended twice and sheltered, sheltering is expected to continue at the Jupiter until April of 2022. Nick's innovation has made a significant difference in the local community and helped influence similar work across the state. It is an absolute honor to present him with the Oregon Leadership Award. You don't often find leadership teams that are so community focused in the way that Jupiter is, which makes our team feel like a community and we're all in it together. It's really, it, it's a great place. Jupiter Hotel was uh, founded in 2004 by a group of local investors led by Kelsey Bunker and Todd Breslau. Uh, and it's really been a community driven and inspired hotel since the beginning. And uh, in 2018, we expanded and opened the Jupiter Next, kind of an evolution of the brand. Due to COVID, we found ourselves with this vacant 81 room motor lodge hotel and thought, how can we make use of this and do something good with this space? And I immediately reached out to Multnomah County and they had a strong need for a place for people who are houseless to live and to isolate. We all put our heads together and we were like, you know what, let's not make a decision from a position of fear. This is the right thing to do. And it turns out it was the best thing to do. And when those things kind of merge together, you gotta capitalize. And so we met with Multnomah County on Wednesday afternoon. And by Friday, they had a contract ready for us to sign and people were getting ready to move in. What are the CDC guidelines in general, right? And then taking those guidelines and not just meeting them, but exceeding them in any way that we could think of. We had to, you know, make it up as we went along and, you know, everybody was in it together to try to get as much PPE to our team that were actually going into rooms. If housekeeping need help, everyone jumped in. So it was a great partnership. So there was no division between departments. We were just one team. One of the great things about doing this so early and making this pivot with the county is that Jupiter was able to develop a system that could be shared with hotels across the nation. We were reached out to from other hotels. We were reached out to by the Emergency Operations Center in the city of Honolulu to share our COVID cleaning guidelines. Nick's still heavily involved with Project Turnkey as they continue to turn motels into shelters post COVID type of uh, situations. Just the experience we got working with the county on managing a hotel asset for a different use, we've been able to provide a ton of insight to them. You know, there's not a whole lot we have control over right now, you know, and yeah. being yeah. a part of a solution feels really good. Wow, thank you. Uh, I'm incredibly humbled to be recognized by Travel Oregon for the work that Jupiter has done these past 16 months. Uh, to have the opportunity to serve the Portland community while addressing an issue that impacts our industry so deeply has been the most rewarding experience of my career. Uh, and I really need to take a second to just thank the incredible team we have at the Jupiter. From the ownership on down, this seismic shift in our operations would not have been successful without the thoughtfulness and flexibility that they all brought to the table. It's really inspiring to get to work with them every day. Now I just wanna take a second and talk about joy. I've been able to start traveling a little bit these past few months and when you really distill the tourism industry down to its core, we're all in the business of bringing joy into people's lives. Our industry is woven into the fabric of every community across Oregon and we are front and center as our communities start to recover. From 19,000 people cheering on the Blazers at Moda Center to being guided down the Deschutes River or enjoying a quiet 
night at a B&B with our closest friends, let's all remember that our industry will be the driving force behind everyone's lives becoming more joyful. Thank you. Thank you, Nick, for your inspiring work and congratulations. Hi, everyone. I'm Cheryl Stryker White, Travel Oregon's Human Resources Manager. Earlier this year, we lost a dear friend, equity advocate, and teacher. Many of you had the opportunity to work with Michael Holsoff Schmidt, either in agency DEI sessions, or perhaps you heard his powerful keynote at our 2017 Oregon Governors Conference in Salem. Michael dedicated his life to advancing racial equity, anti-oppression, gender justice, and helping organizations do their work with a stronger social justice lens. He was wise, humble, fiercely intelligent, and hilarious. So if you're a person of color and you're traveling through Oregon, or if you're a queer person or trans-identified person, what does that look like for you as you're traveling through Oregon? I will just share, just uh, recently, my husband and I were traveling in Oregon, and we went to a hotel, and upon checking in, this uh, young person looked at me and then looked at my husband and said, oh, so you'll need two rooms. I said, no, actually, when my husband and I travel together, we like to stay in the same room. <laughs> and she goes, so you'll stay in the same room together? Yeah, and I thought, ooh. Y'all don't make me take my earrings out. <laughs> For those of you that are in the travel industry, all of you in this room, I'm hoping you are constantly thinking about intersecting identities. Can you hold on to all of that tension all at the same time to make sure that all of these people with different intersecting identities feel safe, invited, and welcome at your establishment? Why I share this with you and why I want you to hear from this amazing panel is because the travel industry in Oregon is huge and you're going to end up hurting yourself economically if you are putting barriers in front of people. Make sure that you are welcoming everyone. The Oregon Diversity of Explorers Award honors the memory and work of Michael Holsoff Schmidt and is presented to someone who has demonstrated leadership in raising awareness or facilitating change to build a more inclusive and welcoming environment for Oregon explorers. This year, we honor the Executive Director of the Willamette Valley Visitors Association, Danielle Tehama. Danielle possesses a unique ability to bring diverse groups of people together, collaborate with others in our industry, seek out unconventional partnerships, and bring well-rounded ideas and thoughts to the discussion of tourism and tourism-related businesses. She has proven her abilities as a calm and effective leader. She's an active listener, hearing all voices in the room before adding her own or forming opinions. She influences outcomes through thoughtful direction and empathetic tenacity. Danielle exhaustively strives to create solutions and initiatives that are equitable, sustainable, and inclusive, always working for all stakeholders in the Willamette Valley, but also to build bridges for other regions to promote the state of Oregon. I'm so pleased to announce the recipient of this year's Oregon Diversity of Explorers Award, Danielle Tehama. Danielle is a quiet, gentle pressure for the world to be better. We heard it loud and clear, you know, well over a year ago within the Valley that people were concerned. They didn't know how to respond to the questions they were getting. They didn't know how to respond to their employees and what was equity to them as an organization. What was diversity? And we just allowed that platform and just encompassed that communication and that transparency to be able to have these open-ended and open free conversations. Under Danielle's guidance and leadership, Willamette Valley Visitors Association is working not only within their own region, but around the state on issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So having a space of your peers who are leaders throughout the state, being able to say, this is what I'm dealing with right now, what do you think about it, allows an opportunity to start practicing those conversations. And it's in practice that you can fail, get up, and succeed. 
there often isn't a roadmap in our industry for this type of work or this type of conversation. And embracing that challenge together has made this work, I would say, rewarding. It's made it fun. But we're taking the collective work that everyone's doing, sharing it, tying people together who wouldn't have the ability to network otherwise. What I'm excited about is to see all of the change, the work that's being done now to see that actually being implemented and see the change not only within the Willamette Valley but across the state. One of the big wins that I saw is people feeling more comfortable answering phone calls because they had a lot of frontline staff members handling calls around the protests happening in Portland, complaint calls about donations they had made to political campaigns, complaint calls about donations they made to Black Lives Matter. They were ill-equipped to handle these phone calls so we spent several meetings addressing how to de-escalate, how to answer that. It's not just a class, a seminar, a training, a book. It's an ongoing process. There's energy behind it. There's a need and a desire for our partners to want to come along with us on this journey until we can see more social justice, more change, until the, the normal is not asking if it's normal. We'll continue this work. Thank you. The Willamette Valley is filled to the brim with the most amazing makers, doers, and producers. It has always been our mission to highlight the region as one of Oregon's premier travel destinations, featuring the culture and heritage of the region and its people. I'm absolutely thrilled and humbled to be accepting the Oregon Diversity of Explorers Award on behalf of the Willamette Valley and our fabulous race, diversity, equity, and inclusion team. This trying year continue to shed light on the social injustices happening throughout the country and we made a commitment to equity. Our equity vision aimed to invite, support, sustain the diverse workforce and stakeholder base of a community that mirrors and honors the diversity that prospers within the Willamette Valley region as a whole. The Willamette Valley Visitors Association, along with our RDEI team, has seen success in our efforts to be more diverse, inclusive, and equitable. We aim to feature more diverse business owners and founders, providing them with a chance to tell the stories on a platform with a larger audience. We focused on more diverse publications, engaging new audiences that may not have been previously exposed to Oregon. We've created a diverse workplace environment that allows for more voices to be heard. We sought out BIPOC makers and producers, creating space for their art and wares to be seen. I'm so proud of our team and their dedication to raise awareness for the beautifully diverse people of our gorgeous region. The Willamette Valley could not have made these wonderful things happen without the hard work of our entire team. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle, and congratulations. Congratulations on your leadership on bringing that destination uh, approach to the diversity, equity, and inclusion work in the Willamette Valley and throughout the state of Oregon. And I also want to offer a heartfelt congratulations to all of our honorees today. I am perpetually grateful and continuously inspired by the incredible dedication and work put forth every day by our industry. And each of you tonight epitomize that work. I don't know about you, but I am so looking forward to tomorrow's programming and the opportunity to connect and to learn more together. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we part for the evening. Tomorrow's events will begin at 9 a.m. sharp, so please log into the Zoom link that was provided in your attendee email just a few minutes before that. For those of you who registered by May 26th, remember to support local restaurants by utilizing the Burgerville or DoorDash gift card to support Oregon's restaurant community. Thank you all again for outstanding efforts and for all you do for our state and for the role that you play in our road to economic recovery. Thank you very much and have a great evening. <laughs>